All right. Good afternoon. Um, couple things to share uh, with you. Uh, the Secretary General will leave um, New York for a visit to China on April 6th. In Beijing, he will meet with President of China, Xi Jinping, as well as with Yang Jiechi, member of the Political Bureau of the Chinese uh, Communist Party Central Committee, Wang Yi, the State Councilor and Minister of Foreign Affairs, as well as Li Keqiang, the, Prime Mini Pri the Premier of the State Council. The Secretary General is also expected to visit the Peacekeeping Military Training Center in Beijing. He will then travel, out, travel to uh, Bo uh, Boao in Hainan Province to attend the Bao Forum for Asia, uh, excuse me, the Bao Forum for Asia Annual Conference 2018, where he will deliver remarks at the opening session of the forum. And we expect the Secretary General to be back in the office on April 11th. I also have a senior personnel appointment. The Secretary General is appointing Major General Gebre Adhana Waldesgu of Ethiopia as the new force commander for the UN Interim Security Force for Abye, also known as UNISFA. Uh, the Major General succeeds Major General Tesfe Hale Michael, also of Ethiopia, who will complete his assignment on April 23, 2018. The Secretary General is grateful for the tireless uh, dedication and invaluable service and effective leadership of Major General Hale Michael. Uh, Major General Waldesgu brings to this position 38 years of experience in the Ethiopian Army, and we have more on this in uh, more of this bio in my office. This morning, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed spoke at the opening session of the 2018 ECOSOC Partnership Forum and said that in order to deliver on Agenda 2030, the United Nations must continue brokering a new generation of partnerships. She added that we count on the private sector to align their business models with the 2030 Agenda because of the sustainable business makes business good business sense. She also uh, called on the business sector to innovate uh, market-based solutions that drive inclusions and provide opportunities for women, young people, and vulnerable groups. Uh, you can watch the forum on UN Web TV, and there will also be a series of Facebook Live discussions on the Department of Economic and Social Affairs Facebook page. And today is the International Day for Mine Awareness and Assistance in Mine Action. In his message for the day, the Secretary General said that in our turbulent world, mine action is a concrete step towards peace. And he added that it is vital so normal life can resume in places where there has been conflict. He also urged governments to provide political and financial support to enable mine action to continue wherever it is needed around the world. And my guest today will uh, be able to talk more about this topic. We'll have the director of the UN Mine Action Service, Madam Agnes Markayu, and she will be joined uh, by the permanent representative of uh, Germany, Christoph Huxen, and the permanent representative of Iraq, Ambassador Mohammed Hussein Bar Al Uloum. And the Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator and Assistant Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Ursula Mueller, is today visiting Sitwe in Rakhine State to take stock of the ongoing humanitarian crisis and advocate for the protection of civilians, unfettered humanitarian access, as well as addressing the humanitarian needs of the population. As we told you, Ms. Mueller is on a mission to Myanmar to observe firsthand the humanitarian situation in the country and discuss ways to improve the response through meetings with key stakeholders. She met uh, with government officials, including Myanmar State Councilor and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dan Aung San Suu Kyi, and the Ministers of Social Welfare, Border Affairs, and Defense. And turning to Syria, this morning the Security Council heard a briefing by Thomas uh, Markram, the Deputy to the High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, on the elimination of the Syrian Chemical Weapons Program. He said that efforts have continued towards the destruction of the two remaining chemical weapons production facilities by Syria. He also noted that the OPCW Technical Secretary continues to be unable to confirm the completeness and accuracy of Syria's declaration. As for the fact-finding mission, 
It has a team currently in Damascus looking into allegations of the use of chemical weapons that were brought to the attention of the Director General by the government of Syria. Mr. Markram stressed that the conclusions of the fact-finding mission do not entail attributions of responsibility in cases where use of chemical weapons is determined. The joint investigative mechanism was created for this purpose, but regrettably, as you know, its mandate was not renewed. The persistent allegations of the use of chemical weapons in Syria underscore the need to identify solutions and reach agreement on an appropriate accountability mechanism, said Mr. Markram. On the humanitarian side, uh, the humanitarian situation in Syria is, remains of deep concern to us, especially for the safety and protections of tens of thousands of civilians from eastern Ghouta who continue to be displaced from their areas of origin, in addition to those who remain in the besieged enclave. Since March 9th, an estimated 133,000 women and children and men have left the besieged enclave of eastern Ghouta, either through established corridors to internally displaced person sites in rural Damascus or through evacuation agreements in, in, to Idlib and the Aleppo governorates. As of April 3rd, some 44,000 people remain in eight IDP sites in rural Damascus, down from a peak of 83,000, but most shelters are still uh, at over capacity. While some assistance is being provided to the population remaining in newly accessible areas, there, uh, there's been no access to the besieged areas of Duma since the last interagency convoy reached the area on March 15th. The UN and its partners are also facing serious funding gaps to respond with life-saving assistance and protection services. In Afrin, the gradual return of internally displaced people reportedly uh, continued mainly from Nabul and Zara, and a number smaller from Tal Rafat towards Afrin district, but exact figures are not yet available. The UN continues to be concerned for the safety and protection of civilians impacted by hostilities in the area and reported restrictions of movement. An estimated 137,000 people have been displaced to Tal Rafat to the surrounding villages due to recent uh, fighting. Also, uh, just to flag that we shared, uh, we shared with you the transcript of the press encounter uh, done in Geneva by Jan Eglin, the senior advisor on humanitarian affairs to the Special Envoy on Syria, Stefan Di Mistura. On the Central African Republic, you will see in the statement we issued late yesterday in which the Secretary General condemned the attack uh, against a base of the UN mission in the country on April 3rd in Waka Prefecture. The attack led to the death of one Mauritanian peacekeepers, while 11 others were injured in a receiving critical uh, medical care. <clears throat> the Secretary General offered his deepest condolences to the families of those killed, as well as to the government of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, and wishes a swift recovery to those injured. The Secretary General said in the statement he is outraged by the killings of 21 civilians, including four children and four women, as well as the injuring of 14 civilians, which occur the same day in the same prefecture. In a, unrelated, in, in a separate incident. The Secretary General calls on the Central African Republic authorities to investigate the attacks and quickly bring those responsible to uh, justice. And our colleagues with the UN Refugee Agency today announced that with, the, with Refugee Solidarity Tour to raise awareness and inspire action for people who have been forced to flee conflict or persecution. The tour will kick off on Friday with a sports day at Jordan's Zatari refugee camp featuring international athletes, including Egyptian modern pentathlete Aya Medani. Other events in the tour will include a fashion show in Chicago featuring fabrics made by refugees in Kenya, a refugee football match in Ireland, a photo exhibit in Paris, a week of events in Jeju Island in South Korea, and judo competitions and workshops in South Africa. The tour will end on October 1st at UNHCR's Nansen Refugee Awards Ceremony in Geneva. More information uh, upstairs, uh, in my office, uh, rather. And just a sad note that we've just, uh, I, we just learned before the briefing, the passing of Mr. Bukhari, who, as you know, represented uh, the Polisario uh, in these halls. And I just want to say the Secretary General is saddened to learn of his death and extends his sincere condolences to his family. Sir. Thank you, Stefan. About Syria, White House just issued a, a statement. Um, it says, we expect countries and the United Nations to work toward peace and ensure that ISIS never reemerged. 
Don't you think that's unrealistic expectation from the United Nations? Can you ensure ISIS will never reemerge in Syria? Listen, I, I haven't seen uh, the statement directly. I think one thing that uh, the United Nations, through the actions of the Secretary General, our humanitarian partners, our political, uh, our political efforts, uh, has been trying to find peace in Syria, uh, to find a political horizon for the Syrian people. Uh, we are eight years into this conflict. Uh, the Syrian people deserve uh, deserve peace. Uh, the message from the Secretary General's also re repeated uh, message has been that any fight against terrorism will also be done within the within the framework of international human rights law and humanitarian law to respect uh, the rights of all people and to protect uh, civilians. Yes, in the back. Hi, I'm Deepak Arora with the Tribune Online, New Delhi, India. Uh, Secretary General is visiting Beijing, and the world is watching the proposed summit between Kim and uh, President Trump. Would, uh, would the Secretary General be discussing this with the President Xi and other leaders? And is there any plan to suggest the venue where the Secretary General where could this proposed no, meeting? I, I'm not aware of any plan by the Secretary General to suggest uh, a venue, uh, but I and I, I don't want to predict what will be discussed. But I think it uh, it's pretty clear that uh, the situation on the Korean Peninsula uh, will be part of the agenda in his discussions with uh, Chinese uh, officials. China has a very important role to play uh, in, uh, in 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 lowering the tensions and in finding a peaceful solution to the situation on the Korean Peninsula. Matthew and then Masood, uh, sorry, and then. Sure, um, DRC and transparency. The foreign minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo has said again that the DRC will not attend the donors conference in Geneva on April 13th. Last I've asked Fairhan twice when you're in your absence and he said, no, we have no correspondence. The, the preparations are going forward. With the, with the foreign minister saying they're not going, is it the UN's understanding that they're not going? Yes, our understanding is that they will not be going, and our understanding is that the the, the conference will go on as uh, as scheduled. My other, I, I wanted to ask you this, and it, it might seem there was a swearing in of, mm -hmm. of four officials uh, today. It's the kind of thing that, at least under Ban Ki Moon and under the Secretary General Guterres, when he began, it was open press, so you could go and see what was said. This was not open press; could not go. But then I asked UN TV for the video, so we could actually see. And there is no video. No, the, the fact that there was no UN TV is a mistake on, on our part. There was a, a communications issue. Uh, uh, we've, I think the last few swearing-ins have been UN photo and UN TV, and the fact there was no TV was, uh, was uh, our mistake. Isn't the simpler answer just to have, why, why, did they, why did it become closed, given that the purpose of these ceremonies is to pledge allegiance to the public? Why would they be closed press? It's not close press. There's a video and photo that's made available press, to you. That's, not... that's That's my, what I have to say about that. Madame... Uh, Stefan, on Gaza, when uh, last time you said that, um, um, that you stand by, uh, you did um, uh, stand by your statement that uh, the Secretary General is asking the Israelis to um, form a committee to investigate their own killing of 17 Palestinians and injuring more than 1,000. Um, as you know, the Israelis said that they are not going to do so. Are you going to take any steps to investigate the killings of Palestinians by Israeli army? Thank you. We still very much hope that that will, and some invest, an investigation will happen. Uh, but as you know, uh, as a matter of principle, the UN cannot investigate uh, an incident wherever it occurs without a, a mandate from an appropriate legislative uh, body. Um, so a follow up. So yeah. uh, you mean? I mean, but there were other. Um, incidents in the past where the UN did investigate, um, like the war in uh, last Israeli war on Gaza. Well, I think the, those, some of those, uh, as I said, we need either a mandate or if obviously if there is damage we've seen in the past in other places, if there's damage to UN property, then, uh, then we do get involved. But as a, as a matter of principle, the Secretary General cannot launch an investigation uh, without a proper mandate. Um, and you mean uh, Security Council from, from a from a legislative. Uh, but did he ask for? A, I think we're still wait, we're still waiting to think. The situation is still evolving. Masood. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Stefan. On Yemen, uh, which there's so much 
Secretary General is talking about. Has uh, the Saudi coalition allowed the United Nations team to go in there free, free without which the Secretary General wants, without any uh, what, what team are you it, referring to, sir? As, as, this, as the question is, right in the beginning, has the Saudi coalition allowed free access? We, we, we which have the uh, has been asking for our our political. Uh, our political wing, so to speak, rep represented by Martin Griffiths, has gone to Saudi Arabia, has gone to Yemen, and is now touring uh, the Gulf to try to bring the parties together and restart restart the process. Uh, humanitarian access has improved somewhat uh, in um, in uh, in Yemen, uh, but we still do not have the unfettered and open access that we need. And uh, it is clear that there have been some barriers thrown up by the coalition, but there have also been some barriers thrown up uh, by, by the Houthis. The, the best and simplest, simplest answer to this would be to see a halt to the fighting so that humanitarian workers can get to where they need to, when they need to. I understand that, but has the United Nations or the Secretary General talked to anybody in the Saudi coalition to allow that I, to I mean, I think, Masood, uh, that has been a persistent and repeated message uh, from the Secretary General, both in public and in private. Sir. Uh, Stefan, yesterday my colleague asked about this. Can, uh, do you have additional comments about the summit in Turkey, about Syria, between Russia no, and Turkey? No, nothing more than uh, what I've already said. And uh, can you ask uh, your OCHA colleagues to get some numbers about the people who returned to Afrin? Um, I'll see if we can get more details on what I've just said. Mr. Lee. Thanks a lot. Yemen and Egypt. Uh, on Yemen, uh, for, first, now that you said that Griff, Mr. Griffiths is going around the Gulf, I'd asked you before uh, whether he was, would meet with uh, Ahmed Saleh, the son of the former president. And many people are trying to get him off the sanctions list. And I just, if, if you find out, if yeah, you can I'll, get I'll, a list of his interlocutors. Yeah. The other thing is I did watch that France 24 interview that the Secretary mm -hmm. General did. Um, and he seemed to say two things. He seemed to say, he seemed to say that all sides are violating international humanitarian law. And I'm asking you this because just now at the stakeout board in the morning, Karen Pierce of the UK said the Saudi government adheres to international humanitarian law. So I wanted to know, maybe it's a trend, what's his position on the compliance, for example, of the most recent bombing that killed 12 I, I civilians? I think the Secretary General said exactly what he okay. said, is that we have seen uh, repeated violations of international uh, humanitarian law during the conflict. Uh, we've had issues with the coalition, uh, which we're working on, and I think we've seen an improvement. There have also been cases uh, in Yemen where Houthis and other groups have also blocked humanitarian aid. And he was at the, the France 24 questioner asked him about taking the check and, and at least in that ceremony, not raising mm -hmm. the issue of the bombings. And he seemed to say, we always raise it. Can you at least confirm that in the, in the non-public meeting, in the meeting with the this photo This is op an issue that the okay. Secretary General, I mean, I've been, I was with him in, in Saudi Arabia uh, a few months ago. This is an issue he's raised with his interlocutors, and he said okay. it repeatedly, and he said it in the interview that he's raised it privately sure. and publicly. Well, just having so actually since he's been there, right. having actually been in the room when he took the chair, I, I was actually, uh, yeah, okay, I mean, I, I've been in the room where it happens, right. and he has raised right. he has raised those issues. Which is why, when you say the open press or closed press, if the White House brings in its own photographer, it's still closed press. I, we've okay, I okay. okay. Egypt, do you have time for an Egypt question? I do have time for an Egypt. Okay, question. great. You said earlier in this week, you said on Monday when you were asked about the ninety-seven percent election of President Sisi. You said, we were not involved in the holding of the election, whether in observing or technical assistance, so I'll leave it at that. I wanted to ask you, since then, one, a newspaper, Al Masri Al Yum, has been fined for its independent coverage of the election, and now a website, Masar Al Arabi, has been raided by the government. So beyond your, the, what you said on Monday, do you believe that, 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 that the way in which the press was disallowed from covering this cakewalk election it complies with uh, the principles of Antonio Guterres and his open press ways? I think the, uh, the Secretary General in the run-up to the election had expressed his concern at the limited uh, political space in the country, uh, and that is a concern uh, we continue to have. Uh, I did want to, I, I know I had I meant to say this, we had been uh, asked about the situation in Western Sahara, and I wanted to reiterate that the Secretary General reiterates his call on both parties to exercise maximum restraint and to avoid escalating tensions. The UN mission, Minorso, continues to closely monitor the situation on the ground. All right, I will get our guests.